Okay, perfect. LinkedIn. Oh yeah, it's out of date. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. I'm extremely excited to see you all here uh, on this session for Lean Launch Startup. So have you heard about it? Are you excited about it? You, how do you, what do you know about it? Let me ask you, yeah. Oh, um, just so that you can say, I just heard about it. I don't um, know what I heard about it, I listen to all the podcasts I know about, like Michael Seidman and people like that, um, Reed Hoffman, um, those types of people I know. I don't think they, I don't know how lean they were. I know some of with the Y Combinator and um, mm -hmm. accelerators like that. But yeah. um, I know that it's basically like you do the work and you're kind of um, bootstrapping. Yeah, a lot of bootstrapping, yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you come and teach? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, just to, to kind of reset in terms of like that very inspiring introduction, I've just pumped up a lot the stuff that he shared with us. I cannot match that, but I'll share with you the stuff that I've done as well. Uh, Lean Startup is about that, and, and we're stumbling and, and just going through this process that we're trying to go through. Uh, but, but again, I'm Carlos Martinez, uh, excited here to, to meet you. Uh, like I said, my story, uh, I worked in management consulting on Freshwaterhouse Coopers for a while, and EDS, if anybody knows EDS, yeah, cool people, yeah, EDS. Uh, and, uh, and then I started my, my own enterprise systems in SAP, if anybody knows SAP, yeah, that's oh, yeah. great. My students in uh, and I said, were like, SAP, EDS, <laughs> you're old school. Yeah, so, so I guess it's great to see high faces that know. And then I ran that for 15 years and sold it to Capgemini, People know? Okay, awesome. So I had to come to Gemini, and then I started a company that failed, and I started a new one now that I'm working on. So that's what we do. So uh, in, in the, I don't know, somebody talked about block, uh, resources, blockchain is a resource platform. It's a freelance platform. Anybody has heard of Upwork or Top Town? Mm -hmm. That model, but for a particular space, which is the oil and gas space. But it's similar to that, so we're disrupting that space. So, okay, so that's my story, very briefly. and. Uh, just tell me your name and then tell me the name of the company or I don't know, I want to figure it out. Uh, my name is Kiro Mugis and currently I'm naming the company Immigrants. So it's Immigrants Services. Love it, Immigrants Services, okay. Uh, my name is Javon Shaw. It's, I work with Proto Tanks right now and I really company. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's where we're all. George Winsowicz, trying to figure it out. Figure it out. John Winsowicz, trying to figure it out. I love this. <laughs> Andrew Martel and I call my company Kurt. Okay, very Raleigh Dewan and my company is Shack Sweet Sea. Okay. Janita Oliver, my company is Monfort Market. All right. Carlos Capiso, uh, Cosmos, the intersection of art, technology, and opportunity. Love it. Congratulations. Congratulations for having something that you're just thinking about changing, something that you're trying to, to, to break through. Okay? Um, I have a quick agenda. I mean, I tell you. Um, you know, what I'm going to cover, I cover over a period of time. <laughs> so we're going to cover what I can, but the most important things. Uh, uh, when Jennifer, they were asking me to do this, it's like, I just do know that you have only an hour now. <laughs> and I said, like, you know, because I usually take days on these things. So and we do a lot of active, you know, entrepreneurship is an active exercise. It's not a, it's a conversation and we do. And that's how I, I see entrepreneurship. So mentoring is not so really. going to be the super lead. Super uh, lean, <laughs> no, and, but everything that I'm going to see here, I condensed it, so, so you're not going to miss anything. I just kind of took all the other stuff out, academic stuff out, let's just do the real stuff. Uh, but what I want to start out is by saying that, uh, I'm just pouring myself out to you, but one thing that I do find interesting about myself is that I, I get very inspired by all the entrepreneurs and all the conversations, but I always feel like I'm like, but I don't know that I haven't figured it out. I don't know if you ever feel that way. It's like, everybody talks about how much success, I'm like, oh, God, no, but what is wrong with me? Why is anybody talking about how much success they had when I feel like I'm a failure? I don't know if you feel that way. And it's such a struggle. I mean, it's just like, oh my God, I mean, how many plans do I have to put together that don't even work anyway? Somebody tells me to put a marketing plan together for what? You know, it didn't work. And then I'm like, oh my God, well, I guess I don't know. I guess I'm not good enough. So, and uh, that's just pretty much my, my upbringing, really, because love my parents, my mom is still alive, and uh, so I, I grew up in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico's lawyers or uh, doctors, anybody else? You, you know, my father was, my brother is, of course, a physician, but I always do it love, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. What is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, I want to uh, yeah, do business. What? Yes, you're, you're supposed to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. 
Anyway, so to this day, uh, so whenever I try a business, I tell my family, they're like, <laughs> and then my mom, well, I, I, I speak with an accent, I said, no, I'm going to do another accent on top of my accent. And so, maybe I don't know, maybe, maybe you need to go back to school. What's wrong with you? You don't know. So this is the dilemma that we deal with the world. <clears throat> so if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to step outside and say, you're in a different category. I tell my students, you know, there's the world, and we're trying to act superior, and there's us, the crazy ones. And we have to be able to deal with that. And Lee Lunch, to me, was my savior. Because the conversation with Lee Lunch is about, like, try, fail early, try again, keep failing, figure it out as you go through. Nobody tells me that it's a linear approach. Nobody tells me that I'm going to do this, 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 and it's going to be successful. No. You're going to go out there? You're going to bust your... And then you're going to see if it works. And then you're going to plan. And then you're going to scale and so on. Okay, so that's the conversation. So that's my start in terms of my, my inspiration for this session that I told them it's important for entrepreneurs to know. I think we spend too much time talking about how much money we're going to get. Who's going to get money? Give me a break. People are like, you know, investors are really difficult, right? I know that that's here. It's like, because for a reason, right? It's your money, you know? We don't need to think about money yet. We need to think about do I have a model that works? If I have one that works, then I can have a conversation. But a lot of times we start it out and we're like, well, you know, you're going to need $100,000 to do it. Go and ask people. Without nothing, it doesn't work that way. Okay? So a lot of that conversation and, and honestly, uh, closed doors with a Jennifer hearing. And I teach this in my class. We do a business plan. But guys, we gotta, we got to get to action. We can't waste time writing so much. So how much do I have to write before I do something? It doesn't work that way. That's all entrepreneurship works. Okay? And I learned that the hard way. I learned that from my last business that I said, how was it successful? Because I went out there and I kept trying things. Yes, there was a vision. Yes, it's not reckless. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and try things and say, I'm never trying this out to see. No, it's not that way. There's still a process of planning, but it's a process of execution. Okay? So today, we'll talk about the lean lunch. Then we'll talk about this thing called hypothesis. Oh, he's a professor. Oh, my God. Hypothesis. Okay? So... So we view a business as a hypothesis. What you have is a hypothesis of something that might or might not work. So it, it starts to become open. Okay, this is where we start to relax. And we accept the fact that it might not work. Okay? And if it doesn't work, I have a session on learning from Fred, I'm not gonna go into that here. Then we have to deal with the emotion of that. And then we have to have this strength to say, but if I'm a true entrepreneur, that really thinks I can change the world. Is there, is there another market, another space or similar markets where I can go after, where I can make that difference that I thought I was gonna make here? We don't wanna waste time on things that don't work. Sorry. I mean, it's just, yeah, your time is valuable. You know, the world needs you somewhere. And it's gonna, it's gonna guide you there. That's my feeling. It's gonna guide you there. It's just like sometimes you're resistant. And we just think, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I've done that. And it's like, well, it's not working. Why? Because I'm not good at this. I have to do what I'm good at, okay? So hypothesis deals with that a little bit, and then the MVP, anybody heard of MVP? Anybody? Okay, so at the heart of the launch is the MVP, okay? It is, it's the minimal viable product, okay? That we bring to market if we don't. And then we'll have a workshop, a quick workshop, where we cannot do an MVP. In my class, my students are put through a, through a horrible crying session where they're like complaining and and walk out of the room screaming, I can't anymore, but they have to build MVPs in 60 minutes. I give them 60 minutes to build to a three version MVP where it has to be online and running and I'm taking purchase orders. I give them the tools. So, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna do a low fidelity MVP here. Okay, that is in the form of what's called a story, which is the first step, okay? So we'll do that, all right? And this is an open discussion ask questions, you know, ask me for clarification, experiences, anything you need, okay? Okay. You know, when you have to use somebody else's computer, it's just, um, <laughs> well, we're gonna do it this way, we're gonna improvise. They want the entrepreneurship qualities, improvisation. That's, that's on my second week in class. We're not going to do it here. Okay, so we're going to improvise. So, 
There you go. Entrepreneurship with Cabernet Love Startup. The, uh, the, it's not working. Let me see. Maybe she has a clicker or something. Mm. No arrows? No. Are you free? Space? Yeah, I, I can't hear him. I'm about frozen. Don't worry, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, do you mind? Yeah. Why don't I keep talking just to make something? <laughs> 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 no, yeah, make it real. Oh, yeah, we're fine. Uh, it's not working. No? No. Can you get tech support? Um, Are you tech support? I am the tech support. They launch. She's tech support. <laughs> My friend. That's how it's supposed to be. Oh, uh, maybe because. I did, a, I did it wrong? No. Okay. Maybe not. You think it's my fault? <laughs> I did not say that. It's, it's Windows. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think this was a like a joke that they were trying to run on me? Yeah, it's, <laughs> just to make it funny? It's booby-trapped. Somebody, somebody doesn't like you, friend. Well, I'll get there. Hold well, I'm going to go over here. So we're going to start. Okay. So, so traditionally, what's the way that you think about starting a business? Let's see how let's, let's draw these out. Sure. Yeah. What do you do first? Oh, there idea. we go. Idea. There you go. You need an idea. You need an idea. Validate. Uh, hopefully, this one's going to erase. If this, nothing. You were just on the wrong um, browser screen. I was in the wrong. You were just. It just had a screen up above the screen that you actually wanted to use. So it worked. So it was my fault. <laughs> 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 oh my God. All the screens just got in your way. That's <laughs> Okay, idea, and then after I have the idea. Get a plan. A plan, okay, great. And then what do you do? Execute. Execute. And then I have the plan, I execute, and then I... Assess. Ass assess, okay. And sell, right? Start selling, making money. Make tons of money. <laughs> and become rich. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually real. This is what we think, and it's not wrong, okay? But here, what happens is that so much of what you're saying there, we have the notion that, that if we have an idea, we have to sit down and build our business plan. Then we have to build a team, which is easy. Come on. I'm sorry. Building. I know Jennifer knows me. It's the ice cream. So. I mean, Carlos needs to build a team. Who? But they don't know. I mean, I, I don't have money. I'm supposed to build a team. Okay? Um, then introduce a product. I mean, if I even know that people would want it, how would I introduce the product? Okay, and then I just go and try to sell crazy. Carlos, you need a marketing campaign that has a, well, a release that costs $5,000 and you can blast it on the market and the people are going to buy, buy, buy. You know, and what happens when you do that? Nobody buys and you wonder, what happened? I did everything right. I went to SMU and, you know, you know, they say all these things, and now I'm doing them on what? You know? So that's not, this is a traditional approach. It can work, honestly, it can work, you know, but it's kind of like, okay, we learned that we're doing something wrong. Because, you know, you know I think that annoys me is that they say, oh, you know how many businesses fail? Oh, you know, most of the businesses are gonna fail. It's like, thank you so much. I'm trying this out. But we learned that the reason why they're failing so much is because they're going out without really identifying is there really a need for what I'm trying to do? Is there really a product market fit? Okay? So on Link Launch, we say, I, I, I say this, my students in the first week, and they're like, because they come from finance, very sophisticated degrees, and all that. And I'm like, you're going to start something from nothing and make it something. So you have zero. I give them, I, I, they open the first assignment and says, your budget for the class is no dollars. How are you going to do it? Okay? That's what we want. There's a lot of trials, guys. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of conversation we can have. There's a lot of networking we can do. We don't need a lot of money to start. And then you can say, okay, maybe I need 200 pounds. But lean is about like, if I, cannot, if I don't have to spend, I'm not going to spend until I'm ready to press the pedal to either get the money or put my own money. Okay? Uh, this gets into the, into the idea of, of your affordable loss that we never talk about. Okay, affordable loss from entrepreneurship perspective says, how much time, how much effort, and how much money am I willing to put into this for a period of time? Okay? So if you say, for six months, I'm going to do a lean lunch run, 
and I'm going to put in $2,000. And I'm going to do this, this, these activities. And I'm going to test the market. I'm going to go and see if people want it. I'm going to get data. Okay? And if, if that doesn't work, I reflect and I take the next action. Or I exit. I didn't spend much. So risk is really fine. Risk is not about, okay, well, I'm going to just quit my degree at SMU and or I'm not going to ever work, I'm going to live out of a garage, you know, some dumb thing that people are talking about that makes no sense. Guys, that makes no sense. It does just, you know, guys that, eh, what are the media. <gasps> but the real entrepreneurs, when we do the case studies in class, we study Bezos and we study Skyhook, which, you know, different case studies, these guys were guys just like us. They're not that great. I mean, they're just great guys, like you are. Okay? But it's like we make them, oh, wow, you know, they really got the money. No, they were working on it, like just putting things together themselves, going nuts, stapling. Bezos was sitting there putting the watches together, okay, put this on top. Steve Jobs is putting together the things, like, we need to make it white, we need to make it this way. He went to a retail store and he was kicked out and said, oh, we're not going to get the product. How many no's did he get before he got what he got? And we don't get, we don't need that side of the story. So that's refreshing. So in a way, they did lean much. So we figured it out too late. It's like, I mean, they're doing the launch, they are doing the planning, I said, planning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 I love me in with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so most products developer, developers don't get customer feedback until it's too late. That's one thing that we found. So I've been there, you know, I had a business uh, back when I started the entrepreneur's journey, like I said, you know, after consulting and everything. Did you hear about the dot com era, e business? I was like, yeah, let's do that. That's amazing. I quit. And my parents were like, oh, finally, you were doing something right. You were working at a major consulting firm. You were going to be a partner. And now you quit. And I was getting married the same month. And you're getting married. <laughs> and now you don't have a job. I'm like, wow, you know, that's kind of what I'm going to do. I think this is what we better. So I go after that, okay? And we try, 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 try. Like, you know, this approach of like what I learned. Build a plan, you know, sell, 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 sell. You know, there were no customers. You know, they, they, it was really hard to crack the market. I really, you know, it, it didn't really work. So I had to really come back to really, honestly, the learning in there was that also is that it was a shining or shiny object syndrome. So be careful about that. We tend to be like, people are like talking about sexy business. It's like, well, oh, you know, let me explain. Oh, wow. Oh, blockchain. <gasps> that's, great. that's a great idea. You know, stuff like that. Instead of like, Really, what are you trying to solve? The simplest problems that you're solving is going to become the biggest businesses, okay? It's not about the, sex, the sexy ones. So that's what I learned from that one. So see, from each experience, we can take something. And instead of saying a failure, which my family was like, oh, there you go. I'm like, wow, this helped me now build a company that I was able to run for 15 years and do an exit on. Because I was getting experience on like what not to do. I need to find myself. What is it that I'm good at? What am I really good at doing? And that's where I need to go, okay? So, so too late, okay? So instead of executing a model, we're in search for a model. Is that, is that? What do you think? Can we tell me your name again? John. John, what do you think? Are you a student at this Yeah. Everything yeah. I'm saying is random, so don't tell the dean. No, you're <laughs> you know, not you know, <laughs> We're very good friends, but, but he knows me, so if he tells me, he's like, oh, I know. We're about to just, you know, Put him in chains, but yeah. but yeah. So I think searching. <laughs> yeah, breathe. Yeah, executing a model. I guess you're you're just you're just diving in without kind of finding that target market, finding that that simple solve that you want you're looking for. I guess searching for a model would be finding some existing problem out there and trying to fit your unique way of approaching it. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and providing some product or service in that way for that model, right? Is that? Yeah, that, there's a lot of good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm just listening. I'm, yeah. I'm actually using this in my le next lecture when I talk. <laughs> what are you telling me? Okay. Anybody else? So why, why a model as opposed to a solution? Why? And, and I'm yeah. asking you this because yeah. that's, uh, that's uh, the, the one thing that Greg uh, told my wife. She, she was like, I hear you describing a solution. Don't look for a solution, look for a model. Yeah. So why, why a model? So, why a model? Because really, and this is crazy, uh, uh, your wife, uh, what's her name? Great. She's great. Awesome. <laughs> but I might, I might say things that you're like, don't say that about my wife. You know, we don't know what we're doing. 
she probably still doesn't know exactly what she's doing. Maybe she does, and you're looking at her, what she does, what are you talking about? She's really good. But, but the idea of being launched is that we have to be open, and we have to say, I have a vision. I have, I have a hypothesis that I, can, that I, want, to, that I want to see it works. So instead of just trying to say, this is a product, this is a vision that I'm going to do, there has to be a product definition, we'll talk about that. There has to be a vision defined. But instead of executing a plan, <clears throat> I'm going to go and say, I'm going to go into the markets that I think I'm going to operate and put this solution in front of them and see whether they like it or not. Does that make sense, Carlos? Yeah. Are you upset enough? Or? No, no, no. I'm not upset. <laughs> He's I'm texting actually, his wife. I'm actually, I'm are, you actually, are you recording it? I'm, I'm actually making notes. So oh, okay. No, that's okay. Actually, that's I, I was just, good. This guy is essentially is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> He's texting it. Okay. So, so searching for a model is, yeah, we're, we're saying, I'm not going to get fixed. This, is, this has to do with the, the fixed mindset that we have as human beings that we've been conditioned to through schooling that everything is like great and everything is so structured and everything is in the box. We have to be open. We have to understand that this is just, the world is ours to conquer, but it's because we're passionate about solving something. That there's somebody that has some suffering and we want to remove it. And if we can have that inspiration, obviously we're going to benefit from it then it will drive us, as opposed to, you know, you're saying, okay, well, I think my idea is the best idea, like, I've done. I'm going to do analytics. I was like, other one recently. And one was like, oh, here we go. I'm going to do analytics. It's just where it's at. I have to do that, even though I have no idea what it is. Went to talk to the boot camps. Obviously, learn it, you know. But, but uh, you know, thinking that my way is the way. No. What I did in that case is listen to the customer. Searching for a model. What's the model that really clicks here? You know, maybe my idea, so in your case, Carlos, what, what I think is, you know, one is they say build a model and let it evolve. Let it evolve to what the customer wants, number one. If the customer, if you're really hitting the customer need, guess what? Selling is, becomes a lot easier. Two, from a scaling perspective, we want, to build, we want to build a model that we can then repeat and bring to a wider market. We want to, again, we want to start with something with nothing, small, manageable, just you and her, living room stuff, I love it. Right? Living room stuff. You know? Moonlighting. Shh. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm going to use some this week. I have my days are packed with meetings because finally we're post COVID, so I'm saying, go well, nuts. I'm going to meet with people, talk to as many people as possible. That's what we do. And then when we're ready, we start scaling, right? And we say, what other markets can I reach with this same model? Okay? Instead of just go finding myself or something. So, a couple of the Okay. okay. Well, we're going to talk more about that. Okay, so lean startups, uh, <clears throat> it's about the customer. So, so it's a process that puts the customer in the center of it. Instead of us in the center, because we're always like, I'm an entrepreneur, I have an idea, I'm smart, all this kind of stuff, that's done. It's about the customer. Because in reality, we just don't realize it. Entrepreneurship is as a, a result of how can we help people? How can we help the world? And obviously, there's some mutual benefit because the system that we have in place is beautiful. We're blessed in this country to have this system, right? It doesn't happen everywhere, guys. So we have to always, I always remind people of that. It's like, you know, we have an opportunity here, but this is how we create change. So we listen to customers and we learn. Listening to customers is hard because sometimes what they tell you is not what you want to hear. And they might tell you, that stinks. Are you kidding me? I mean, I spent a lot of time doing this. You know? But you listen. When you don't listen, it's where you're pushing yourself into that corner of the frustration, and even even more into the part that is it's kind of foreign that you have to reflect on yourself and say, what's wrong? What what, what do I need to do really to say how can I sit with the customer to really understand their needs? Okay? Yeah, they, they're, um, yeah. the founder of Lavin Lane has a great book that he released maybe two years ago, and it's called Listen adapt surprise and he said that's how he built the model mm -hmm. he said that he didn't even have the idea for la Madeleine until he was talking to some ladies and and then they asked a question and he's like well that sounds interesting i'm going to pursue it and then he was just listening more yeah and surprising them and yeah. he says that's a virtuous circle it's an adapt surprise absolutely like, absolutely you know and back to the like when your point about searching for a model it goes along along that as well like once you have a vision you're having so many conversations with people, you're listening, you're, you know, somewhere you're going to end up potentially, most likely, not where you started. And that's okay. 
You know, it's just like, well, we can fix it. And uh, and that's what happened to me. Right, you know, it's like everything just kind of like moves, moves. And now I'm in a place that I'm feeling okay. I'm really? Uh, I feel like I'm in the place that, because you have to feel like, you know, how do I feel about this? You know, in my class, the, the students every week have to do a one to 10 scale. Well, how do I feel about where I'm at? How, do I, how excited, how much passion do I feel towards this? And when there's someone up under a seven, I tell them you need to be there. And in my class, they change models. You got, you're gonna have to reflect, guys. Your assignment next week is to bring a reflection to class and see why, why would you stay if you're not passionate about it. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's conversation, it's listening to customers. Most likely they're gonna say something that you're like, oh, wow, that's it, that's it, yeah. And with your wife, like what he said in that conversation, spark something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, another thing is that you can listen to customers in here. That's why I'm, I'm like a fish out of water in terms of like having these sessions like this, because I'm like, we gotta go on the, we gotta be on the street, we gotta be in front of customers, we gotta be building stuff, no conversations, so we gotta be building, okay? And we cannot do that in the office. That's not how we build businesses, okay? Um, then we move into the MVP, okay? So for the MVP, the idea is that this is at the center of this. We're gonna create something that is a minimum feature set. Okay, think of your product and say, what is the bare minimum I can put on this? Okay, on a piece of paper, we're gonna start on a piece of paper that I can bring to people and say, what do you think? And they tell you, I like it or I don't like it? Can you tell me more? And you probe them. And they tell you, well, actually, you know what? I like that idea, but what I truly have a problem with is ding, 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 ding. And then go to the next one. I like that board. I didn't really have a problem with this ding, 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 ding. And that's happened to me with the analytics business. I was doing this analytics business and having the meetings with the executives, people that I knew that trust me and love me. And they're like, how do you know that? And they're like, well, you know, it's, you know, I don't know if anybody in analytics, you know, it's it's great, but there's it's a long, long cycles. There's a lot going on in that space. It's very hard to crack. Uh, but I had a lot, of, a lot of connections in the market. I know how to deal with the market. But what I kept hearing over and over is like, but we have a real problem with the enterprise resources that you have access to. Can you help us with that? I'm like, I, kind of, I thought I was going to do this, but I mean, and then the next one will say the same thing. The next one said, the guess what? It's like, well, that's what happened. By listening to customers, I'm realizing what really happens. We created a minimum of our product, which is like an initial version of the platform, 69 bucks a month, 1,000 bucks put in, okay? And it looks like it's 10, you know, whatever. Million, I don't, I don't care, whatever. It has all the functionality, people can post, freelancers can go in, look at things. For us to get started, experimenting. It's an experiment, which I'll see, is it gonna work, okay? So the minimum of our product is something that we really need at the center to say, when am I ready to then move to the next release and when am I ready to then scale, okay? All right? So, this is the part that I love. <laughs> Customer discovery. These are the four phases of the launch, okay? So customer discovery, what do you think that means? Well, why are you asking that question? It says customer discovery. Well, but tell me a little bit about that. It's customer discovery. Well, I'll be doing customer discovery. I mean, I think that I asked her, but I guess it's, um, but if we did, we did some fancy, you know, market analysis and target market, ITM, all that kind of stuff. So, customer discovery. Any thoughts? Any, any great ones? No? What do you think? Just throw something out. It's that matter. Sounds like just what you were saying go talk to people and figure out who, who the customer might be. You got it, exactly. And there's no participation grading, my, <laughs> my students are really like, ah, yeah. Uh, they have to stand up and actually, but, but, but yes, customer discovery is like, does the problem really exist? I'm just gonna ask people, have I built anything? Most likely not. Most likely I have a piece of paper, maybe I have a deck with five slides. Brief, to the point, sharp. Let me test it. Carlos is confusing, thank you. All the insults come along. Uh, it's too long, oh, thank you. Um, uh, you're all over the place, too complex. Thank you. So, you know, we're in a thank you mode on all the insults that we get from the customer. But we're trying to refine and understand, you know, who is there really a problem? So I go to people and say, in customer discovery, we're trying to say, does the problem exist? What's 
one way that I can do that if I was going to ask people. Another way that I can do that in, using technology. What do you think? If I, if I was going to use a technology, a way that I can send something out to people, what can I do? Uh, just a landing page. Yeah, the landing page. Yeah, landing page. You can have a, I can have a landing page. And on that landing page, that's great. You know, what can you have? Uh, when you have a landing page? Yeah. Um, just uh, sort of like a uh, description of what yeah. you're trying to do. Yeah. Like, hey, we're doing this. Yes. And then um, have a form submission thing. Where you're exactly. To exactly. And that's one that's uh, exercise number three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you have created the landing page. And the landing page, you're collecting information. Number one, you know, one thing that, that, that we do is say, when I have the email form that says, you know, we make it exciting. We're doing this, you know, we're resonating with the market, you know, we have, we're sending email blasts, we're using all our strategies to acquire customers, to get customers to come in, right, to, to look at us. We do have to use some campaigns of social media. That's all in play, right? Uh, so once we get people in, we can collect email addresses. If somebody gives me their email addresses, they're, they're thinking about it. If they clicked around, which I can see from the traffic reports, more people are clicking, you know? Uh, and then the, the great one is a pre-order. I can say pre-order here. And if I get some of those, wow, I'm getting excited. Do you, do you have your guys use like Google Analytics or? Absolutely, okay. we use Analytics, yeah. So we, we use, uh, anybody heard of Wix? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, Wix, and Wix has a great set of tools. If you, know, you haven't used it, you can put up a landing page like my students have to do it in 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do it probably in less, you know, let's say. You use one of the templates, don't get, Okay, the exercise of the reason why system is is to teach the the the, the concept of it. don't over engineer, don't overthink. Simple is better at this point. Okay, we don't we don't have we don't have time. We don't have time. Okay, time is valuable. My time is up. No. Oh. Okay. Just coming in, say hi. Our time is valuable. I know. <laughs> <laughs> time is so, super valuable. So, so we don't have time to be over engineer. No, we want to make it nice and sexy, but believe me, you can do that very easily. We can put a video, it can show you even better as the founder with an inspiring story of what motivates you to do this. Right? So a pre-order, we can do a pre-order through Foxy.io, you know, one a tool that we use. But with a pre-order, you can say, people can say, I, I'm really interested in the product, right? And they can even give you credit card information, which is crazy. And my students are able to do that. In our case, using Wix, we send email blasts to our database that we have 10,000. We can see how many people are coming in. In this last one, I'm excited because there's a market response. <gasps> oh my God, isn't that what we want? You know, we're not spending a lot of money, but we're getting a market response, meaning people in the world have the problem. Call it Foxy.io. Uh, yeah, okay. and I, can, I can give you more information. I can send you actually uh, the assignment that has all the links and okay. everything. For sure. I, I don't think it's SMU proprietary. Okay. I'm just kidding. Actually, seriously, don't lump me with them. <laughs> Do what you want, Carlos. <laughs> so, so yeah, so see, we're training on the response. Am I there yet? No, I'm not. But I'm excited. It's okay. I had a I had a huge setback yesterday because we are you know, we've had several resources come through that process and what resources they completed the process and they created kind of an issue with a customer. Okay. Honestly, when I had that experience, I was like, I went back into that hole <laughs> with my family of like, what's wrong with me? Why didn't I think of it? You know, why can I be so careless and everything? And then I reflected and said, wait a minute. Now I can develop the process so that I can then use it properly when I scale. Because I'm in an initial set that is a very small set. That's the first part that we're going to do. We're not going to go, see, in the old days, it's like, well, let's launch the product. Yay! Millions and millions and millions of people and see if they want it. In our case, when you do the market, uh, so we're looking at an initial customer set. Initial set. I know that we call it ITM, but I like to call it initial customer set. This is a very confined group of people that, are, that potentially I can screw up with. Get it? So I don't blow it. Now, if I launch into all the channels, I'm on I'm showtime, and it blows up, it's hard to want to, I'm potentially done, okay? So think of your initial customer set. Can be tough, you know, initially, if you don't have, I think some of you have experiences from prior, I think you have some prior experience from other, you might have a network, you might have a huge network, yeah, some don't have as much of a network, but what can you do if you don't? 
go out and talk to people. Get out of the office. Go to the street. Connect with people. I have an idea. I have an idea. Can I send you a link? Can you give me an opinion? Hey, I have something. Can I send you a link? You know, that kind of stuff. That's what we do. Um, so customer discovery does a part of exist. But it's a simple question. Do they want it? Do they care? What we want is, I don't know, I don't know Chick-fil-A around here, but in Florida, Chick-fil-A, there's a highway and it gets backed up because the line is so crazy. I mean, I'm like, why are people eating chicken so much? So I tell my kids, so my kids, I don't know. And because my kids are like that, right? they're funny. I'm never gonna be an entrepreneur, but they're, they're entrepreneurs. Uh, so and they tell me that they're in like the media and the mm -hmm. arts and all that. So so we're driving and I said, that's what you want. That's what you want. You want you want people to be like, how, how much more are you open? Oh, you're closing. Oh no, I didn't want you to close. I wanted to stay, please. Okay? Now we did, then that's when we deal with the operational plan, right? The execution, the logistics, and we have to have things in place. Again, we're not trying to just wing it. That's the problem with being launch. You know? In our faculty, we have those discussions and they say, you know, we have different views. So I'm like the, the guy that's sort of like, let's go on an experiment, you know? And some of my peers are like, well, make sure your students are doing the planning. They're doing the planning. That's not the point. But they have to go out and do something. Before they know they can do the plan. No, honestly, who can do a plan if they haven't done research with people out in the street? That's what PhDs do. I'm like, oh, you're all PhDs. <laughs> I mean, is that not what you're doing? Why can't I do it? You know? So think about it that way, okay? The plan should be a really good solid document for me to get funding, really. Right? Now, my, my plans, I do them, should be a brief, right? That details out what I'm going to do. Could be a slide deck, a picture deck that I can bring to people. And I should, have, I should have a vision, but not get too bogged down and nervous that I have to have everything checked out, okay? So I think you're all there. Customer validation, I love it. <clears throat> so now that we have, let's say that we can exit customer discovery. That means that I got enough responses through surveys, through the landing page. I sent surveys through Z Zoho, uh, Monkey, Survey Monkey. There's different tools that I use. So that's another great way. You send a survey out, blast it out on social media, get responses. Um, people are like, you know, ah, then you're like, oh, yeah. And, the, and you also have to think, am I going to the right places to, to attract the people that I need to ask the question to? If I'm asking to the wrong people, obviously, then it's going to work, not going to work. So you got to look at your market analysis that way, okay? Uh, so, but let's say that, that we're hitting it. Ooh, people seem to have the problem. That's how I started this class. So all my businesses, I started like that. Send a survey, overwhelming response. Oh yeah, but, and then very, very pointed questions. Would you, do you have this problem, yes or no? Would you use this solution that we're showing you here, like you said, yes or no? Would you pay for the solution, yes or no? Would you pay this much for the solution, see? So we're validating different components of the model, of the business, of, of, of the, of the business model, so that we can know the tolerance for the customer, right? And you know, the pricing we're gonna have to analyze, but the customer say, I'm not willing to pay. That's something we're gonna have to take into consideration, right? We gotta understand, you know, where we are. But we know the market enough that we know the pricing in the market from other competitors, that if people are like way off, we know it's like, yeah, you're not really a real good, you know, data point. You know, you're an outlier, but generally people will tell you, it's like, I'm willing to pay. And if they're excited about it, they say yes. So we exit customer, we get customer validation. The MVP becomes the center of it. Now I have the MVP. I said, I have enough, I'm gonna build, you know, a little bit of the features of the product, something that I can put in front of customers. At this point in customer validation, we wanna get initial purchase orders. Our goal is to push through to that initial customer set to people who will tell me, I'm buying it. And they will buy it, okay? So it has to be a working model, okay? Oh, some, some, some sort of an initial version, think of in your, in your context, very, very different, right? So, but it has to be something that can be sold. In my example, like I said, the platform is very basic, but people can, a company can tell me what they need, and I can match them with a person, and I can create the transaction. So that's, that's the model, right? It doesn't have the Skype model, it doesn't have all the collaboration tools that we're planning to have in future releases. As part of the launch, we create what's called a product hypothesis. In the product hypothesis, we say release number one, release number two, release number three. So we're not gonna do that today, but just to let you know, and I'll show you. Release number one is the minimum feature set. What can I have that I can put in front of people that they would buy and tell me they will buy? 
With these two is an additional set of features based on the feedback that I receive from customers. We're trying to get feedback from customers on what things are needed. So I'm getting feedback right now. It will be nice if you have this. It will be easier if you have that. You know. Uh, and then release three might get a little bit more into show time. Okay, makes sense. So customer validation here we're answering the problem. Customer validation we're trying to say, do I got initial purchase orders? This is the the most difficult part of the of, of the model, right? Of, of lean launch, and this is what traditionally we will do as a business. This is when it banks or breaks. We're saying, can we sell? Can, is, are people really gonna buy? People might like the idea. People always say it's neat, like I know the speaker was saying, oh, you know, great idea. People say that all the time. And I'm always like, you know, but, but, you know, give me money. <laughs> and then when you give me the money, then I know that you really care about the idea, that you see a return on the investment. There's not a lie that you really have a need that you're willing to invest and, and give me money. Um, so this is a difficult phase, right? And that's why it says here we pivot. So, so we say, if we're not able to, to book initial purchase orders, we have to go back to customer discovery. We got it wrong. The problem really doesn't exist. Maybe it's a similar problem. So we need to do more discovery. We need to go and probe the customer further and get more information about really what truly the problem is and maybe shape our idea differently, okay? What might happen at this point, and I, I, the speaker talked about this, I may completely say, I started with, you know, uh, I started with a platform to the resource platform that I have, but then I'm gonna pivot into a new business that is not gonna be the platform, it's gonna be something similar in the consulting space. So we might pivot at this point. We might say, okay, I'm gonna go into a different place because the market is telling me that, okay? Um, and that's what happened to me with the analytics. I was going down a place, got to customer validation, couldn't book purchase orders, couldn't book purchase orders. So I had to really change the model and pivot to something else. So, is, yeah. <coughs> so I work with a lot of uh, startups. Yeah. <coughs> As a reminder, I'm a uh, freelance marketing consultant. Mm. I help companies build their brands and scale for retail. Oh, so you just so need to sign up the platform or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, yeah. But I work with a lot of incubators. And part of what is often a challenge for startups and entrepreneurs is they're so, to they're so tightly tied to the initial concept yeah. that they're not willing to flex when they mm -hmm. hear the customer feedback. Yeah. And the customer can be, you know, whether it's the consumer or, Absolutely. You know, I've gone into Walmart and Targets and they don't have feedback yeah. about the product. Yeah. And if it's too far along that you're not able to incorporate their feedback, then you, they're going to make a decision or you're going to have to make a decision. Absolutely. And that can kind of make or break your, you know, your, your success rate. And so I tell people all the time, probably and I have this conversation, like spend your time in that upfront yeah. when you're flexible enough Absolutely. that you can make the revisions. Because once you get further down and people are thinking, oh, i got to have something to do yeah. before I go. Yeah. When it's complete, it's less flexible. Absolutely. And you're not able to adjust to your consumer request or the customer. That is so request. key. Exactly. That flexibility to adjust. Absolutely. Very good. Anybody else in the experiences? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the idea here is that we're not, we haven't really spent too much. Some more point here. We haven't spent too much, okay? Uh, for example, if it's if it's a, uh, in, in my, I just can relate to my case, and I want to hear in your, and you can tell me, it's like in my case, it might be it might be harder because it's an asset intensive business, so I'm gonna have to have some money. How do I deal with that? That that is a reality. But but in my case, I can stand it up in Wix. I can then stand it up in the in one of the freelance platforms, and I can be up to then get to that phase. And like I say, it's flexible. It's something that I can then now build up. The reality is, so that the person hear it, we're building it as we go. This is the agile development process, okay? That that we stole from the engineering side and, techno and the technology side. Uh, we said, well, you guys seem to be building applications like involving customers all the time and getting their feedback and doing loops and iterations. That's what we're doing, iterating. So we have. Release number one, we iterate through that release, gather feedback, release number two, another iteration, and this is how Apple does it. It's not a, it's not a secret, and they're so successful because of that. Facebook does the same thing, they just go through a final release, and then they, they send the next one out. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna plug in the incubator, because yeah. I think that is, it, it's, of course, absolutely mandatory to listen to your customer, mm -hmm. but it's also good to listen to other entrepreneurs, because they're mm -hmm. gonna ask you good questions. So uh, here at the incubator, if you're not part of it, you can apply. And you'll see on this wall right outside, 
that the companies are going for different stages. It's idea, yeah. validation, scale. So well, I can uh, talk to you if you want. I'm a mentor. If you want to. I I'm not mentor. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And 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 so now the, the good thing about the pandemic starting to ease is that now you can mingle with other entrepreneurs here, and then you don't have to set up a meeting. You just cross paths and start asking questions and. We're all very open to give feedback, right? Or maybe uh, point you to <clears throat> an adjacent type of customer segment or someone in your client segment that's going to give you true and honest feedback as well. Just yeah. a plug from the incubator. Oh, that, I mean, I also plug, thank you. I mean, and, and that is so important. What's happening here, uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship mindset as a discipline in itself, is what Carlos is saying is that, like I said, we're out of the office. I mean, we're out talking to people. We're talking to other entrepreneurs, advisors, customers, other people. And that's what really this part is going to happen, guys. I'm sorry. You know, and it's not really what we have a vision and we've been chosen for that vision. But the world, the universe has its own way of working its way. And it's going to do what it needs to do with you. And you need to be open to that. And the more people you talk to, the more you're going to hit that. So yeah, I mean, this is a great forum. Uh, I've been part of these things forever. But all my businesses, you know, when I started my other one, it wasn't here at SMU, but I was in a similar situation. And I would go to the co-working space and tons of the things. You have, in this in this phase, we have tons of problems. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. How can I do that? How can I build this out? Hey, there's a guy in the engineering school that's really good at coding. He can help you with the MVP. And he can do it for 500 bucks. We're looking for things that are cheap. Okay? We're looking for free trials of people that are motivated enough to do stuff for us. Okay, like crowd, like crowdsourcing. I don't know if you heard of that. You know, people like are motivated to say, okay, yeah, I'll do it. You know, no, we're gonna take advantage of people because that's not right. But if they're motivated enough that they're willing to come in and we just maybe give them a little bit something and they're more, they're excited about the idea, great. So, so thank you, Carlos. Great problem. Okay, so if we are lucky enough to get our customer validation which I haven't gotten out of customer validation in my case. Because then my wife says, oh, you keep talking about customer validation. <laughs> you know? uh, but customer validation, for us to get out of customer validation, we have to be able to book enough purchase orders. I have booked purchase orders, but I don't feel that it will be a repeatable model. We're trying to develop a repeatable model that I can scale. This is where the scaling comes in. Comes. So I mean, and now let's say your wife is doing this, this Spanish, right? It's a Spanish model. So she goes to customer discovery with that. She goes to customer validation. Then we're working on the, the kinks of the process. Like I had this problem with this resource that did that. That's not a repeatable model. We need to change that process, okay? Once I get that going, the marketing engine, is it working? Because I'm trying different things. LinkedIn ads, Google ads. I'm pushing to social media. I'm having you know, concentrations. What's working, what's not working? Remove what's not working, let's concentrate on what works, okay? Now, if it's a repeatable model, that now I'm able to, to really create purchase orders, then I can go towards customer creation. And customer creation says, says, now I'm ready to really push to the channels, whatever channels I have. Now I'm ready to bring more people on board, okay, potentially. I'm I'm because number one, I'm gonna have more cash flows from operations. If I have enough cash flows, I can maybe afford an employer to carefully, part-time, whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. Or if I have done very successful customer validation and they have something very tangible that shows the bootstrapping that I've done, maybe I get an angel to invest. Now, I'm not counting on it. And I'm the type that I'm like, it's about me. It's not about somebody else doing it for me. But nonetheless, that is the model. If you think in customer mm -hmm. creation, uh, most likely if I can get investment, it'd be great. Uh, so we can, and that, at that point, we're blasting out. We're in the, maybe like in a further release of the product, we're gonna truly blast, we're gonna put money into press release, we're gonna put money, more money into ads, advertising dollars increase. Now we have a model, maybe have a salesperson in-house that he's gonna repeat the process that we know works and we're creating demand. It's a demand, it's a demand creation mechanism. Make sense? Okay, company building is, okay, well, if I'm able to push through that <clears throat> and, uh, and see that go through all the ups and downs that would occur through customer creation, right, once I, once I get really showtime, then I get into company building, which means now I have a real company, okay, I'm sorry to say, but we don't have a company until, until we do all this work. Now I have a real company and I can have different people in charge of different things. Okay, maybe I have a person on operations, I have a person truly in charge of marketing. Um, 
the problem, this is, and this is my view, and this is truly a new launch view, is that in the beginning, we don't really have all that stuff. We don't need a VP of this or a VP of that, guys. We're all founders. Oh, we're just, a, we're just people doing a job, a task. Okay, but a lot of times we get too too worried about like who's gonna be you know the VP of this, the, the, the CEO, whatever. I get it. That, that's important, and we do need to bring the right people on board. But but we have to bring them at the right place at the right time. There's some sweat needs to happen here, and I believe in entrepreneurship side, the entrepreneurship side. Okay, um, and this is just my view. I think that your sweat equity as an entrepreneur shows your passion for what you're gonna do, and you're the one that's gonna know the business. Um, you're not going to control everything that's going on in the business, but, but this phase, the founder is the one that's really running with most. With the help of whoever you need to bring in to, to, to assist you, okay? All right. So like I said, add all the bomb. It's add all the iterating quickly to different releases, getting customer feedback, okay? Um, talked about that. We talked about this. You know, we have release one customer feedback, iterating, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so it's 11.07, this is supposed to be till 11.30, so what I'm going to do is, you probably want to take a quick break, right? You've been sitting, take, let's take like a five minute if you need to, you know, run the restroom. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find a video that I have on this, on Blue River Technology, how they did their pivot, so you can see this process of, of customer, of lean lunch, and then we have the workshop. Okay? Okay, so five minutes, come back at 11.15. Uh, your wife's your 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 wife's model sounds interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think she's onto something. Now she yeah. uh, what's she telling? Uh Spanish lessons using stories. Uh for kids, like using animated stories to, to teach uh, kids uh, Spanish for non Spanish speakers. Is there a strong cultural representation mm -hmm. there? There, there, there is. Yes. Yeah, okay. There is. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, I struggled with learning Spanish for many years <laughs> to get my credits through school. So yeah. I can and, and she has a special method. Uh, that allows kids to learn it much faster. Yeah. Yes. Not something she developed. She's really taking it as a basic building block. It'd be really cool if uh, you know if it works and then you know, scale that everybody with Spanish would then start adding other languages, mm -hmm. right? So that's a I think that's a really great model because it has a lot of growth opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Like uh, a Duolingo. Have you guys yeah. uh, heard or used Duolingo? Yeah. I love that app. Duolingo. It's it's an app that yeah. it teaches you another language like you were a kid and you, you oh, yeah? basic stuff like oh my gosh. Learn, awesome. learning words and yeah. onto sentences and short things and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. I tried That's it pretty cool. I didn't get a lot of value out of it. So no, it's okay. Like, I just, maybe I just didn't know how to use it effectively, but it, I think it was because like I got a minor in Spanish at SMU. And like, so and by the time I had do downloaded Duolingo, on, I had already finished this. that. And so the stuff it was trying to teach me yeah, was things that I had already learned years, years ago. Volume. And so it was, yeah. it was reinforcing topics, so, but I didn't really no, 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 reinforce so all these things. Right okay. So I, I was, I struggled to figure out yeah. how to land on the right things within their platform. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, then there were also very complicated not, things that, like, all of a sudden, if the jump was like, okay, well, this is way too far, I needed something to middle ground. It was almost okay. like, uh, it almost felt to me like there was somebody who's never taken a single Spanish lesson, like there's your day one people, and then there was content for, like, people who are practically native speakers, but are just trying to be, get better at it, right? I mean, we still take classes to learn English, even though that's our first language, right? You know, um, and so it didn't. It just didn't feel like there was that middle ground for people who have been educated but aren't necessarily like fluent, right? And and so that was the struggle I, at least personally, found with that app. Um, and so that also gives us another opportunity: is if she can solve for people like me, or you know, and heck, maybe they're doing it, and it just didn't make it clear enough to me that sure. that's what they're doing, but so she could make it obvious or easier to achieve that. Like that's something I would totally use. I, I love speaking to them, so I love learning more about it, but I don't get good opportunities to 
because I mean I have a okay. few friends that are yeah, um, you know, they're like from this the countries and they speak it and I can so practice with them a little bit, but um, only so much okay. before like, it just kind of slows down the conversation. Sure. You know? Okay, um, we'll we'll stay quiet and while we're done or something. Yeah. 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 Okay, <clears throat> so, so Steve Blank, I don't know if anyone have heard of Steve Blank, he's one of the, he's one of the founders of this Lean Launch out of Stanford, and that's the material that I use, and there's several books if you're interested on the topic, okay? Uh, and they put a set of videos that I, that I uh, follow, uh, this is one of them, of a company that did a, like a, a pivot. They went through this process of being lunch, and they're kind of showing, showing their experience, okay? So we'll do these videos in about four minutes, uh, and then we'll do the workshop. Does that sound good? Okay. Um, so it's, the volume is not very loud, so maybe, maybe you can make it a little bit closer, see if you can hear it. Um, they didn't, let's see how it goes. Was that they were paying a service currently 
question connected to this and, and the other doctors. Early evangelists, okay, this is, this is a concept that we launch. We have this concept of saying, you know, we have the evangelists of the product, like the early adopters, the people that will buy into it, that have the problem and are willing to do it. What I talked about in, in the initial customer set, that's what I'm saying, is a group of individuals that potentially either they trust me enough or if, if the product is not perfect, I'm not gonna, they're not going to trash me. They're not gonna say, oh my God, this is awful. Or even if, even if they say this product is very flawed, I'm still in safe territory. That's how I see it. I'm not at scale. I'm not trying to push to a wider market yet. I'm looking for that, those early adopters, like Carlos said, people in the beginning that I can bring on. Now, early evangelists are, are significant because they're people that come on board with you. Like the company that said that they actually came on board as a customer, gave them a lot of insight. They came part of the development cycle with them. And I've had that experience in my business where a company is like, pretty much working with me in the development. And that's what you want, does that make sense? Yes. So you put it in front of people, but the, the, this is a very key point. What we don't want is to, like you said, put our product into the masses that we haven't validated with customers yet. Fail. it's not gonna work. We gotta say, how can I start with something that I know is not the final version, put it in front of people, they can give me feedback, modify, put it in front of people, iterate, Iterate, iterate until I then get to the scale. So you're you're um, really searching for a specific demographic of customer. Yeah, whatever that you, know, you as an entrepreneur, you would look at your market and say, where can I go? Okay. So in my example, like uh, like when they were saying my background, I worked in the oil and gas industry for a while. So okay, well, so I say okay, the oil and gas space is somewhere I know. I know about you know 100 guys in here that are like in, in at the executive level that are pretty that trust me pretty well. Okay, I'm gonna hit them up. 
I'm going to keep that segment up. Okay, for you, it might be a geographical area. Maybe it will be the, the local market that you have here in Dallas or an area that is, is compound to your school. Whatever that is that you say, hey, I can, I can go in here and get people to try it out. You got people to try it out in the beginning, okay? Uh, like in the, in the example that I have, I pushed it out and there's problems. I mean, I mean, there's problems with the platform right now. I mean, they're like, okay, hey, Carlos, you know, it, it didn't send this out. So I go to the product development, I, I got guys that I have sourced and I'm gonna make a list of all the features that need to be changed. Or, hey, that was kind of like not really good because it took us too long to finish the process. So there's flaws in it, but we're not, we're still in customer validation. We're still in that process. Or, or, that in, or clients that are in such pain that, yes. that are yes. gonna be willing to try it because they yeah. don't want the pain removed. Yeah. Absolutely. Example, we're talking about independent school districts, mm -hmm. uh, once trying to sell a solution to Dallas independent school districts, I found out that you have school principals that are like Marines. They're, they're shipped to different schools to turn them around. If they're failing, they are shipped and, and they don't have a whole lot of uh, additional resources either. Mm -hmm. Those probably would be good clients of yours because they, they need to turn around an operation. They've done it and they're in such pain that they're gonna be willing to try it, for sure. Exactly, and that's why customer discovery is so key because we've already talked to customers and when we're talking to those customers, we can sense the pain. Mm -hmm. We say, okay, this is one that's really hungry. And then I know people in this space that are really hurting. That I, what I'm doing is gonna help them, okay? And I'm gonna just touch on that here really quick. So, look, what we're saying is we need to identify those initial potential customers. Those, and they're really more, I hate to call them customers, I like to call them more like those early evangelists. What are those that I'm gonna go after? And you know, don't, don't take this wrong, but uh, you know, we'll see, well, I'm gonna experiment. I'm gonna see how this is gonna go. And I'm gonna be, remain open, I'm gonna plan. I'm not gonna do anything sloppy, I'm not saying that. But I'm gonna be open to the fact that I'm going to this initial customer set. You know, it would help me to see what different connections I need to put together to customer validation before I truly launch the product. Okay, and I need to understand what types of customers I need to involve first. Like you said, you know, maybe you know they're at a different level in the company. Maybe they're consumers. Maybe they're end users. I mean, what customers do I need to involve and, first? And, and I think it's cultural too. Mm. For example, in China, that's very common. Oh yeah, the Chinese are very used to even buying products that are not you know 100 percent because they know that there's going to be a diversion. Mm. If you're selling to corporations. Some corporations are more open to trying new things yeah. than others. If you try to go to a corporation that you know culturally is against taking risks, you just know that it's going to take you a much higher level of effort to even break in. Right? Absolutely. You better find an organization that is more more culturally open to yeah. taking risks. Absolutely. So then you look at that type of customer. You know, what's their willingness, right? So early evangelists, and it's great that we're all talking about this conversation. The customer will understand that he or she has the problem. So, you know, we're looking for someone like Carlos said that, you know, it's bleeding. This person is bleeding. So a lot of times they're trying to do it themselves and they're like, you know what? I'll try it out because I have no choice. You know, I have a lot of choices right now if you're disrupting that market. They're lo looking for a solution right now. They have a lot of pain and they have tried to fix it and they have tried different things and it's not working. And they have and they have some budget that they can probably pay for what you're doing. This is the, the dream of customer validation. Okay, this is what I want in customer validation. I'm not gonna make, let's just, you know, we're going into pricing. In my model, I know that this is not gonna be full price. I'm gonna have to give something. I need to get in the door. How do I get in? It's more valuable for me to get VP to say, we'll try it out, for me to put that, and then I said, and I'm gonna use your name, you're gonna be my early evangelist. Okay, when I launch, and that goes to my press release, they're gonna back me up, they're gonna see me as a partner, okay? I have customers that actually go with me to sales meetings, I mean, that from way before, they go with, you know, they have that kind of trust, okay? So, so that's what we're looking for. Those early evangelists are the ones that we're gonna go and say, you know, we're forward, like in the landing page, we're working on this product. This is the vision, this is what we're at, this is what we have, okay? All right. Kind of going off of that, how, how would you, Going back to the, even the model, finding your model, how would you adjust your model if you're going after like a broad, you know, consumer audience versus more corporate big business audience in these early stages? Yeah. How how would you find that model that fits you? Is that kind of makes sense? 
So I'm gonna look at it from the customer perspective, and then yeah. you you tell me. So so you're saying like the model, you're saying like your vision. Yeah. Yeah. How would you adjust it if you're going after a white market? You're saying yeah. Yeah. So so again, and, and you know, let, let's have this conversation. You know, challenge me. Yeah. The idea is that that I have a vision, I have a hypothesis, and I'm gonna talk to as many companies for as many people as possible in that initial customer set. And they're gonna give me insights and feedback I haven't happened with Blue River that might completely change the model. Mm -hmm. Or I'm gonna to have to adjust the model to fit the true needs of the customer. Yeah. Does that make sense? So you might find that maybe corporate's not the right fit. It might be Absolutely. Here, Absolutely. You're testing person. markets. You, you know, you have a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm gonna address the, the 18 to 35 year old, which I don't care too much. I want to get a day in the life. Mm -hmm. You know, like this kind of customer, if I see you, I can repeat thousands of this person as a persona. It's called a customer persona. That's why I, I try to get into it. Uh, but I might be wrong. That's what we're experimenting. I'm finding that he's not really the customer. He actually really tell me, and it's happened to me. Yeah. Well, Carlos, you know what? I don't need that, but you don't want to talk to so and so. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's not the same customer, you know, psychographic, anything that I thought. Yeah. Okay? So, yes. Okay. Okay? Okay. okay? Perfect. Okay. There's so much stuff, guys. This is so <laughs> awesome. You know, we, we, would do, we would do a customer hypothesis. The customer hypothesis is what we lay down what we think the customer problems are, and then we go and try them out and ask customers, is this truly your problem? The product hypothesis, like I said, like I have here, says, this is what my vision for the product is. And this is the first release, this is the second release. What are you talking This is the third release. <laughs> three minutes with the workshop and everything? Okay, we'll, we'll do it in three minutes. Okay. <laughs> What's going on with that? Okay, so. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, and yeah, it's, it's, you know, yeah, I'm going to complain because it took some of my time. <laughs> I'm going to complain. I thought they were going to say, hey, don't worry. But anyway, okay, so for the workshop, and then uh, we'll do this throughout the day, but we'll start tonight. We'll start now. Let me pull it up and I'll show you. So there's different things we can do. As you can see, there's so much good stuff on the launch that we could do. Um, oh. um, it's interesting, I don't even know what let me see. I mean, <laughs> this PC is really something. Let's see, Southwest? Why is she in Southwest? <laughs> oh my god. Um, want, want to get away? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wants to get away. No. Um, anyway, so like I said, there's there's a lot of stuff um, that we can do that we can do here in terms of building a product hypothesis or a customer hypothesis, and you can get that. But the one that I had. Uh, the one that I, the one that I thought, because again, the MVP is at the center of all this. So I feel like, if you think from a planning perspective, customer hypothesis, I want to get back to my slot, my files, but I can't find it. You know, because uh, <laughs> uh, I only have three minutes, so I was maybe rushing. To Which files? Well, where all my files are. It was like a directory of things. I don't know if it's this, but I tried that, and that doesn't work. Where are my files? I don't see them anymore. Is it this? The other screen? You mentioned something about another screen? Yeah, yeah maybe there's another screen. Okay, so so um, so since MVP is at the center of this, that's really what we want to move through after we do our customer hypothesis. Now what the, and you probably know this already. We're customers. Uh, and then product hypothesis, we want to build that first MVP. Uh, one thing that we can do is call a storyboard. And a storyboard is nothing but a four quadrant model that shows the, the solution that I can take to people. It's part of your pitch deck discussion or your initial discussion in customer discovery. See how you're not getting too far. This is just pen and paper at this point. Um, you can close all those, it's just I want to get to my files. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and I mean, if I uh, if, if I had commercial materials, do they get access to them or email? Like, can you know? Them? I can. Um, yeah, I can send them out to them. Okay, so she's gonna send them to you, and then we're gonna communicate and we'll make this one. But it's very, it's very straightforward. So it's four quadrants. Okay. 
a storyboard is something that has been used for years, as you know, with Disney and all that kind of stuff. It's really exciting. It's a way to to use. Um, oh, it's a way to use. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I went to use animations, you know, um, drawings to just draw a story out. Okay, so so uh, storyboarding is something that I, I believe in and I use uh, is to get early customer feedback. Like I said, Disney, Airbnb uses this. I mean, the big guys use this stuff. So we're in we're in the cool stuff. Okay, this is the stuff that you can, they they do this to launch new products. This you know, and basically what they're doing is mapping out a journey. They're mapping out a, you know what. What's the problem? What is the customer going to do? How we're we gonna do it? Is that sequence? It's a sequence of, of action. So Airbnb says, you know, we have people that are trying to think about where to go. They're wondering where they wanna go. Then they say, well, the product or the solution is gonna be that they can go into a computer and start looking for places and they're gonna find us, okay? Then they're gonna book it, boom, through Airbnb. Then they go to the locations, they're they're, they they go to the place. They met by a host. They dine. They go around places. They they fly back home. Tell their friends. They do reviews, which is important for them. And then they tell everybody how great it was. So this is the customer the guest journey at Airbnb. Okay. So so really, storyboarding is about stating what the problem is, the solution, and what benefit it's gonna bring to the customer. So see, this is kind of like that pitching exercise of us getting very comfortable with just very quickly telling everybody what we're trying to solve and then validating that early on in customer validation, okay? Um, sorry, customer discovery. Once we push into customer validation, we're gonna translate this into a more tangible MVP that we can try to sell to people, okay? But we wanna get this feedback early on. You see how people are gonna tell us that's not my problem or your solution doesn't really work, okay? So the components are the problem in the first quadrant, your solution, how it works, and the value and benefit to the customer. And I say that because this is the part that I love. This is what challenges. Tell me why I would buy it. What is the customer ROI? Why would the customer buy this product? It's a very important question. And if we can get insight from the customer as to why would you do it? How, what is it removing? What, what pain is it removing that you can quantify? Then it's a winning you know, winning model, okay? All right. So there's an example of mine. So you have someone that's, that, uh, that's overwhelmed. She's overwhelmed because she's an accountant or an IT person, needs help, nobody's helping her, and she doesn't have enough people. The, there's not enough resources, they're hard to find, they don't have the skills, uh, and the business is actually pretty uh, tight right now with costs, so she can be hiring a lot of people. She needs temporary people. High, high consultants that can do the work, but for a short period of time, okay? She can have a huge spiral burn. So the solution is, it's a platform where we have these resources, like the guy that is going like this, the experts in disciplines. She goes out, she, she puts up a request to us. We get the request, we handpick the best resource, goes through a, through a very rigorous process of, of validating the resource and saying what, you know, it meets the requirements. They interview the resource, we do a lot of chatting and fancy stuff to, to excite the customer. Then we sign a deal and then they, they win. Okay, so that's an example of one. Okay, so closing because we're gonna we're gonna go to the, the model kick us out there. So storyboarding is, a, is an initial form of prototyping. It's engaging. It's easy. It's something you can do. It might not be the most sexy thing. I know you probably some of you are like probably like really we're gonna do a, a storyboard. But believe me, if we can validate that the problem and solution that we have in mind. It's gonna work early on in customer discovery, then we can really refine as we move into customer validation what the product needs to look like, okay? Um, some people, I mean, uh, might have a, a storyboard and some form of you know, more detail on a deck about the product. That's okay, okay? Questions, thoughts? <laughs> what do you think? It's very good. Okay, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> no. Absolutely. No. Thank you, thank you. I got you thank there. You. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, the workshop, um, would be for you to build that out and the instructions are very, gonna be very um, easy for you to follow. It just says pretty much, here's a template to use. Um, I give you the, the template and I give you the instructions and you just kind of build your own storyboard. 
Okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.